Hello everyone. Thank you for coming again to listen to Let's Talk, our English version of Tuganire. It's Emeran Kaijuka, uh, the host of uh, this show. And today we are the 24th of uh, September 2022. And as usual, our special guest is the singer-songwriter, storyteller, you name it. It's Megan Alexa. Megan Alexa, welcome to our show and to our listeners. As you all know, Megan Alexa always has some interesting stories. For today's story, Megan asked me to give it the title that you all noticed, Do the List. I'm very sure everyone is wondering why we are asking people to do the list instead of asking them to do the most? And that's a very good question. A question that Megan Alexa is ready to answer with her story. Megan, this is your time. You can now take the microphone, greet our listeners, and let us know what you have for us today. Hey everybody, it's nice to be sharing a story that I'm sure would touch all of you. As a young girl, Lucilla Takjarad, born and partly raised in Algeria, grew up living a very difficult lifestyle as her parents struggled to make ends meet and were deprived of an education. As a matter of fact, Lucilla and her sister would cuddle against the winter's cold and had their weekly showers at a public bath as their home was persistently short of water and heat. And habitually, they would mask their hunger in order not to stress their parents. As the civil war broke out within their country, she would pray every night that she wouldn't notice an empty seat at the dinner table one day. One day, her mother, at a local market, learned that the French government was allowing some Algerian refugees to find refuge from the Civil War. All there was to do was write your name on the list. The list would guarantee her children a positive future. She so desperately wanted to sign her name, but she was illiterate. With sorrow, she walked away. But then a man noticed her and caught her. He asked her name and wrote it for her, Favilla Takjarad. A few months later, the Takjarad family was fortunate enough to emigrate to France, later allowing Lucilla to attend a school recognized as the best in the world. Isn't it beautiful? And I quote, from the small seeds of his goodness have grown fruits of prosperity, end quote, for herself and everyone we meet. The key takeaway is that you don't need to move mountains to make a valuable contribution or change in somebody's life. As told by Takjarad, the least one can do can bring change. Wow. Thank you, Megan, for telling us that beautiful story. Actually, that story reminds me of a story I wrote in my book. The Terrible Truth About the Truth, just uh, to remind my listeners that my book is almost, almost published. Now it's a fact. The Terrible Truth About the Truth is going to be published very, very soon. I'm now counting weeks. So uh, my story, it was... Um, a story that happened 23 years ago when I was immigrating to Canada, or better said, running away from my country, Rwanda, going to Canada. So I had to take a flight to USA, to the USA, because uh, as many people know, it's very, very, very hard to obtain a visa to Canada. So many people prefer to uh, get a visa from uh, to, to the USA and then from there 
they can try to get to Canada. So that's what I was doing. Take my flight from Africa to Europe and then from Europe to New York and then from New York to Detroit. Arrived to uh, New York airport when I was checking in to take uh, the flight, my flight to uh, Detroit. The airport agent asked me where I was going. And I said, I'm going to Detroit. And she said, uh, may I get the address? And I said, no, I don't have any address. The woman looked at me, very surprised. And she said, you don't know where you are going to Detroit? And I said, no, I don't know. And she said, how come you don't know where you are going? And I said, I was very sincere. I said, oh, well, my brother and my sister live in Canada and they are the ones who are coming to get me from the Detroit airport and from there they will let me know where to go. The woman looked at me, not believing what I was saying. She said, ma'am, you don't know where you are going to Detroit, in Detroit. And I said, no. I was very honest not to say that I was a stupid because I didn't see the danger even if there was and the woman left her office and she went in the back room I didn't know where she was going now when I think about it because I now know how the system works she must have gone to check with her supervisor but I didn't know I was just there, not worrying about anything. As soon as she left, another woman who was following our conversation came very quickly and she tended me a paper, a piece of paper where she had written an address in Detroit at Oak Street. And she said, she told me, when that woman comes back, Give her this address. Tell her you are going to this address. Because if you continue to say that you don't know where you are going, they will deport you. I wasn't supposed to tell you this, but when I saw that you are pregnant, yeah, because I was pregnant. Actually, I was eight months pregnant. And I had a one-year-old, three-year-old, I felt so sorry for you. That's why I am giving you this information. I don't remember. It has been 23 years. I don't remember what happened after that. Did I use that address? Did the woman come back and ask me again the same question? I don't remember a thing. But I am just thinking. When you were telling Lucilla's story of women, and just by writing that name on a sheet of paper, the least she did, did the most. Now Lucilla Tektrad is in a Harvard University. Every child in this world wants to go to Harvard. But look at that girl, Lucilla, who came from nowhere, who came from a very poor family, whose mother didn't know how to write her name, but now she's in Harvard. So that reminded me how perhaps that woman who just gave me that piece of paper with an address in Detroit, I don't remember if I used it, but what if I used it? Perhaps that prevented me from being deported from Detroit to Rwanda because I have heard a lot of people who have been deported from USA to back to their countries. It happened and most of 
most of the time is those people don't have anywhere to go like me i try to imagine if that day that same day if i was deported back to my country my country that i so loved but i couldn't stay because i was my life was in danger what was going to happen if i was deported so i am thinking that woman who gave me who just wrote that address on the on a piece of paper she thinks she did the least but actually it could have turned into the most it could have prevented me from being deported with my one year old three year old and a lot of things that i don't even remember how i was carrying a lot of stress and my life would have been in danger so yes i agree with the silas message do the least do the least thank you for listening to our show and i hope you will be with us next time when megan megan alexa comes back with another story thank you megan alexa for being our our guest and uh, thank you for your stories we love yeah. your stories <laughs> <laughs> well i'm glad to hear that okay thank you for listening and see you next time <laughs>